Hello, everybody. I guess most of you are expecting us to present or introduce ourselves um, to talk a little bit about this topic and to drive it through the presentation, right? It is exactly the, what we are going to do. Um, Boris Wagia, I'm a software engineer at Audacity, and today, with Yanni, we are going to share with you our experience on what not to do while using GitLab. Um, I guess a lot of people are a little bit confused, and I'm expecting some to be don't know from this talk, right? Because the topic is a little bit controversial. Um, first of all, why this topic? Um, most of the time, when people start adopting a technology, um, they just read success stories. Um, and this happen over the time. When you study systems, you will think that what drives people is the latest innovation, the latest um, hip that we have in the world. And particularly in the software industry, where we have new technology popping out um, quite frequently, and people are curious. Enterprise and company just want to, to move forward, to adopt the latest thing. And this is why we chose this topic. Why? Because when you adopt a new technology over the time, when you underrate success stories, um, you end up hitting your head on the wall because um, you read a success story and then you start investing in it and then you figure out that, yeah, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that way, first of all. I should have st stick to what I had on to my current setup. So the idea here was to say and to share our experience and what not to do to stop to prevent people starting to use GitLab for the first place or uh, when they start using it, um, at least to be aware of um, stuff that they shouldn't do. So what are we going to talk about? Um, we are going to share a little bit our GitLab adoption history from Adosis. Um, we are going to describe our challenges, then how we solve them, and then go through again um, those meta patterns that we have learned since then, right? What are the meta patterns that you have, we have learned? I would like to share and interact with you, and maybe also learn from you too. Um, yeah. Our challenges. Um, over the year of using uh, those, of, of using GitLab, um, we had a lot of problems. But first of all, how, what what happened? I mean, since we are starting, we started using GitLab. Um, Yanni want to give us a little bit um, information on our GitLab adoption so far. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, we started using GitLab in 2013 after faced several problems with our whole version control system. At the beginning, that was very difficult to adopt it because it was new for us and we have never experimented before. So, after many try and hard work, we start understand how this work and we are able now to to use it. So actually we manage a GitLab instances with more than thousand projects, with more than thousand active projects, and talking about four hundred and fifty and fifty developer, active developer, on more than two thousand build per day. So this statistic just to give you a basic understanding on how our infrastructure is is built. Right. I mean, to get there, we had a lot of pains, right? Um, to go from 10 developers to 400, to go from two projects to 1,000 projects. Um, yeah. Then we had a lot of challenges that um, 
I'd like to share with you. Um, the first challenge that we had was um, availability. What do we mean by availability? Um, as the time was going on, uh, we had like sometimes some random crashes, right? Um, some data loss, and it was not obvious for us that was back in the days. And it was quite difficult to debug. Or was it GitLab the problem? And I mean, sometimes you had an infrastructure that's working like a straight year without problem, and one day you just have like, um, all the data gone, all the systems down, or whatever. And it was quite complicated. We started to think, okay, maybe this new product doesn't make sense at all. Um, shall we switch and so on? And it was a little bit complicated. And this was, I mean, those problems were not quite a problem. The problem was to investigate a step further. Um, what is the problem that we have, the meta problem here? And we looked through everything, and actually, GitLab was not the problem, but um, I think our infrastructure itself the way we were hosting it, the way uh, we had GitLab installed, and as we were growing, I think we needed to upgrade, right? We needed to move to something better because we had a lot of infrastructure problem. And yeah, and what we did... Okay, to solve the problem, we're just looking around to find a provider who can give us a scalable infrastructure or a scalable resource. And then we look on the market and choose Amazon that had a good offer for us. And since this time, we are running without resource problem. Um, we are satisfied. Yeah, and um, today we are seeing um, like the product itself is moving more and more with the collaboration with Amazon, like we saw, we heard today from um, the CEO. So at the time we had to switch to Amazon to have some better hosting of the product itself. Then the second challenge, um, as you grow, you have um, scalability problem, like um, extremely slow services. Like, yeah, we are running on Amazon, right? Um, but at some point, you figure out you have like um, 60 customers running on your instances. And I mean, developers from some teams were complaining about the pipeline because it was taking too much time. Um, people get frustrated because the service was low and it was quite a pain after, I mean, you switch from 50 developers in your team to 300 and with a refreshing environment. And then you start noticing some patterns like slow pipeline, um, team are really you know, frustrated and you have a lot of memory issues on the problem. So we investigated and then we figured out so many customer using the same instance and you know in GitLab you can create a group and in group you can create projects, right? and assign users there on the same instance. And managing and handling our customer that way was a little bit complicated and we need to fix this because it doesn't make sense to have um, a team from a customer to be blocked because some other people are working in the same instances and consuming the world resources, right? And it was pretty um, annoying. Um, we talked about it. And we say, okay, we do something completely different. So to solve the problem, we decide to supply our infrastructure. We decide to deploy for every customer one GitLab instances, that is like a small instances. And then the, the client, if our main instances is down, our client will not be affected because everything is supplied on each will run inside the whole instances. Correct. Partitioning, first of all, is a concept in computer science. That means um, keep things separated to avoid um, problems. And we wish really that we had this experience of, you know, having things separated um, for a better life during our product adoption. And this problem we had it like uh, back in 2015 and 2000 
2016, um, we had some requirements that we couldn't fulfill. It was quite complicated and you have some requirement and you need to, you know, sometime customers say, hey, look, we want to do this. We have this software development and we have this process that we want to implement. We want our product to be deployed over this night or in this way and so on. So at that time, um, moments arrive where the product itself, GitLab itself, is do not have what you need. And there were a lot of ways of fixing it. Either we say, hey, look, we cannot do it, or we say, um, yeah, we will implement a custom solution. And this is what we usually did over time. Like, okay, we want this feature. We try to implement a custom solution. And then tomorrow with a new release, In this situation, we implement a release concept. That means we upgrade our system each time GitLab publish a new release. So it's like after Git. <laughs> yeah, the idea here was um, we have some problems, we have some new future that we want. Um, we have to either we investigate, we, we invest time in fixing that. Oh, we say, okay, we don't do it. We will wait the next releases and fix it and left the, the customer with the problem until the next release come. So yeah, so far that was our GitLab adoption journey. And the next step was, um, yeah, a picture of cat because cats are cats and there's nothing we can do, right? Yeah, so um, what not to do um, really? What really not to do? when you are using GitLab, the principle one, we talk about it as principle, don't fool yourself. Um, early optimization is the devil, and that was your move. Um, we had those situations where from new releases, we tried to upgrade the whole system to fit those new feature that came in in the project. And after you upgrade the whole environment, the system crashed again, um, yeah. So the first principle is, um, keep things as they are, only use what you need. And Gilda might come up with some pretty awesome features and you can see it on the website, market it everywhere, um, but ask yourself, do you need it? If not, don't use it. Maybe you might want to use it at some point in time, but what we learned was um, don't change your system every time you have a new feature coming from GitLab. It makes no sense. Right, um, leave things as they are until you need them. That was our principle number one. The principle number two I'd like to share with you is um, the feedback loop. People neglect this a lot, but we know this new system means new problem. That is the fundamental systematic law. For every system that you start, that you bring to life, you create new problem, like managing that system itself, right? So um, when you start using a feature, don't expect it to work as it is described somewhere or by anyone. Um, implement it, but then take the time um, to gather feedback from people using them. Um, for instance, the DevOps people implementing features, they are not doing it for themselves. They are doing it for developers that are using the product itself, right? So when you implement a new feature, take the time, like one, two, three weeks, and get a feedback from people or from your customer, and does this pipeline make sense? Does this pipeline is behaving as we expected? Um, are people happy working with this? If not, remove it. And there's something that um, we used to experiment. You might have some new feature, try some experiment on implementing that feature, like some pipeline, and have some, I mean, test the feature you want to give to people or to the developer before leaving it to them, All right? And if it doesn't make sense, if people are not happy about it, um, drop it, and then don't enforce people to use it. And the pipeline here or whatever feature you're using shall be 
there only to match the development process of the team and not just because the feature is available and it is cool. So um, you have to keep that in mind. It's really important. What comes next? Um, train and delegate. Education is the premise of success. Um, we have seen projects and teams where um, over the weekend, some DevOps implement some cool stuff and just push it there, and the day after, everything is working and nobody knows what happened and why it is working that way. And then he takes holidays and the whole team cannot work anymore. Um, you have to stop that. Um, train your people, train people in the team, train everybody using, in that project, train everybody using that feature or that pipeline or that advanced thing that you have in your pipeline so that people can understand and they can fix them. And by people here, we really mean um, all team member, exclude product owner. I'm not sure if product owner need to learn about pipeline, but um, train your developer to know what is happening in your pipeline and to know if or how they can improve it and to understand if there's a problem, maybe they can know that, yeah, in this pipeline, you are doing this auto scaling up that is causing problem and consuming so much resources out there. Or they have to wait too much to have their pipeline done or to have to continue working. So you need to train them to understand what is happening. And sometimes developer want to change the workflow. We are understanding really that sometimes it is complicated to have this workflow that they have and if they understand better the words of the devops and they will be efficient in providing i mean they will be efficient in helping building your development process in collaboration with the devops so training people in the team to use the product and understand what is going on on the hood is really important never miss to do that never ever First one number four, awareness. I particularly um, love this one, right? Don't assume you're the first. Um, of course, there are smart people out there um, doing excellent job. Um, don't assume that you're the first to do it. Um, by this, we mean try to learn and collaborate with people. GitLab itself is an open source project. Um, it is open, everyone can learn. But we have a lot of teams building custom solutions, maybe they fit your needs. But if they had to collaborate, if they had collaborate with a lot of people around them in the community, learn and attend events or sharing or exchanging with other people, they will learn how they're implementing it. Um, we have found ourselves implementing custom solutions that we really needed to do that. And when you go to a meetup or when you go to an event and you talk with somebody and you just say, hey, we are using this this way. How are you using that? And you say, oh, we are using it this and this way. And it took us three weeks to implement it. Uh, so then isolate yourself, get in touch with people and learn how they are building the product, how they are using the product itself is really valuable. Um, don't fool yourself and say, we know enough and we will do it on our own. At least that's our suggestion here, right? So just to summarize this, uh, don't fool yourself. Don't estimate the value of first feedback. Not all of them are also valuable. Yeah, because some people might give you some feedback and that you really don't need them, right? Um, don't let it out to the super advanced develop train the team to take over. If you don't do this, you will have, I mean, if you don't do this, you will have some pipeline and people that cannot switch between project, right? And so on. So let the people in the project and learn what is going on. It's really important, really important. So never miss to do that. And I am very real try also to learn from other, right? We all know what this means. So, so far, so good. And while doing this talk, we thought about creating a new GitLab community where company and individuals can come and drop their adoption, GitLab adoption, 
um, experience. Why? Sharon is caring. I have a cookies. I have a new sport car. Big house, lot of outfit. Do you have a cookies? No. So you have everything, but you don't have a cookies. Um, the, <coughs> yeah, just to say, um, sharing is caring. Help other people um, with what you know. It might be a good idea. I mean, it's together we are stronger, and we can only improve the knowledge in the continuous improvement, in continuous delivery, and continuous in the integration industry only if we are working together, right? So this is the idea of this. Some people trying to adopt the product have no clue how other people are doing it or implementing it or using it or how they are building it for their use case. And the idea here is to say, okay, let us create a community where people will write their success story and their failures is really important. You cannot learn only from success story, from failures also, like we did, how we had our problems, our challenges, how we fix them. Um, it would be nice to have an open project somewhere on the world or uh, out there to have a project where um, an open source project or open source repository where um, individuals or company can come and contribute and say, okay, um, we are using GitLab this way. When we have this, we had this problem, we solved it like this and made it open source. So tomorrow when somebody here will start a company, it will be easier for him to check what happened and what the other people got and did to not go through all that pain. So, and this here was also the key for this talk, um, to reflect on this idea of having a community where people will share their experience and adopting the product also. Um, I would like, we would also like to get your feedback here. All right. So with that said, um, that's all we have prepared for the session. Thank you very much.